Hi and welcome back to my channel. You are jumping directly into a jelly printing session. Today I'm making some A4 prints with some of my brand new stamps after I have had my January release. I um, did some jelly prints with the stamps and I enjoyed this so much that I wanted to have more of these kind of stamps um, this time and now I'm making some prints with them. I don't have a color scheme in mind or a color combination I want to use today. I just want to experiment. The paints I'm using are the paints from Amsterdam mainly and also some from Schminke and I decided not to cover the whole um, plate with my paint. I started in one corner and then I add some stamping with the texture stamp from the Mixed Media Marks number two stamp set. It's kind of a um, ledger paper background. And then I go in with a another color. I decided to pick not a real complementary, but a contrasting color. And I used just another stamp for it. I believe this is from the Lace Doilies. I sometimes am not sure if it's the Lace Doilies or the Mandela's. It was a fun thing how I created these doily and mandala motifs because I um, was drawing on my tablet and there is a function where you have symmetry and there I just experimented and tried out and I love the result and that reminded me so much on these little doilies my grandma had on their sofa and it um, it was something very special and I always used these uh, doilies she had for playing and that made me want to do some doily stamps. With the big jelly plate I feel it's a bit difficult if you have paper that is smaller than the plate so you always have to lay something on top to not smear the paint everywhere. But of course you get a full print what I like because I like to make some of these little zines with the papers and then it's great when everything is printed. Really like that print. My friend Dunya asked me if I have ever printed on acetate and I told her of course no, can I do this? And she told me yes you can and I asked her if I can share this here with you. And what I have are these overhead transparencies and um, I don't have a thicker acetate here. So maybe I would recommend trying it with a thicker piece of acetate than you can use um, them for cards also. These transparencies come with a sheet of tissue paper in between and I also want to print on that tissue paper. Donia is a fantastic artist. She makes the wonderful and prettiest creations and I will link her up in the video description. So please check her out. I'm doing it in the same way I just did it before with starting in a corner and I can tell you this first acetate print will not be the best but I will make some more which I like even more. I always have a sheet of paper laying next to me to clean my brayer so the paint doesn't dry on it and it also makes a really nice background sometimes. And um, then I'm printing on the back side of these um, brayered papers. So I have almost every time a double sided jelly print and that can be useful sometimes. What I also like about stamping on the plate, you can transfer the paint from one area to another, um, which sometimes ends up in a really nice result. Mm -hmm. 
If you're wondering how I clean my brayer, I usually wipe it off after printing. My first brayer I've never cleaned and it I think it ruins it over time and it gets texture on it and then it doesn't bray up very smoothly and so I usually wipe it off with a baby wipe and then I use a little bit of alcohol and wipe the rest of the paint off and that helps it to keep it very clean. I now put the acetate on the jelly plate and I didn't press hard enough I think and I believe I get a hole in the print there you can see it but I just lay it down again and pull the paint off with using acetate you have a lot of paint left on the plate where you can make a second print and therefore I'm using that tissue paper that is laying in between the foil with tissue paper you have to be careful because it can tear of course but it works really nice and it is a really really thin layer of um, paper and it can be used perfectly in mixed media. Recently I bought some new shoes for the kids and there was a lot of tissue paper in the packaging and I kept this also for jelly printing because it was a bit more stable than this one I'm having here. I will give you a flip through all of the prints at the end of this video so you can have a look at them. By the way, I'm using a printer paper for these prints and I'm using the 200 GSM paper at the moment and I will switch to a 120 GSM a little bit later. This time I'm starting with a blue and I do the same that I've done on the first print I did with that um, background stamp from the mixed media marks number two and then I go in with a different color on the other corner. This time I decided to use a neon color. And I believe this was the one I used right away after printing to um, decorate my new bullet journal for the next half year. I don't buy expensive bullet journals because I'm not a pretty bullet journaler. I just use it as a planner and I often put some stickers in it because I'm a little bit addicted to stickers and um, I decorated it. It's just a spiral bound B5 book from Oxford with a dotted grid and I want to have a more prettier cover so I just cut the jelly print to the right size and glued it on top. I think I made a reel of it. I'm a little bit afraid. I'm just doing the voiceover and it's Saturday morning and I want to have this video uploaded by 2 um, in the afternoon and I th see I'm talking so much and I have to make this voice over in German as well and I'm a little bit afraid that I also have to talk a lot over there so maybe I will be a little bit more quiet during the next minutes. I really liked how this turned out and I decided to pick paper instead of acetate because I had the feeling that it would not look good on the acetate. Such jelly printing sessions can be very long and if it's too slow for you I'm taking the videos in real time then you can use that little gear in the video screen and speed up the video I believe to twice of the time so you have it a little bit faster and also me as a little Mickey Mouse speaking. 
I always get asked which green this is I am using and this is the sap green from the Schminky Academy line. It's my absolute favorite green. It's super transparent and so vibrant and beautiful. The other two colors I've used on this print is the Burnt Sienna from Amsterdam and the Dark Naples Yellow also from Amsterdam. I want to print this on acetate so I decided to make more of a simple pattern so it's better visible. And I think this turned out a lot more beautiful. You will see it at the end and I will lay it over a white sheet of paper and you can see the texture much better. I believe this could be really nice as um, in between pages in a scrapbooking mini album for example. And I think you could also make some really cute um, filled tags for gifts so you can just use two. Um, cut out tags from the acetate and then fill them with with some sequins and sew around and this is the tissue I think it's really pretty And as I like this combination so much, I decided to make it again and print it on a piece of paper. Just instead of the Naples yellow, I used the portrait pink from Liquitex this time. I have a jelly print in my stash that I'm never using because I really love how it looks and I try to recreate the colors from this one. The pink on this is the Quinacridone Magenta. It's only available from the artist line from Schminke or of course from other brands of course too. Um, it's pretty expensive so well, it was not my first uh, choice for printing colors, but it's such a pretty and beautiful color. And I messed a lot of into the lid and <laughs> I tried to get some of it out. Um, but with this, I have way too much pink on my plate. I would love to take two prints from this um, this layer, 
but I feel it's really difficult to make two prints if you have such a big jelly plate. It works easy with a smaller one because you can just increase the amount of paint and then take the print very quickly and then make a ghost print. But I have the feeling that with this big plate you need more time for everything and the paint dries a bit quicker and I couldn't figure out to make good ghost prints with this big plate, but I will um, keep on trying, of course. I'm storing my stamps that I'm using with paint on a piece of a wet baby wipe just to make sure that the paint does not dry in between the process and when I'm done with printing I just clean them with water. I try not to push too hard and work pretty quickly so I can get a ghost print but you can see that I have already a lot of um, empty space on the plate. I'm trying it anyway and I will have a print with a lot of white and I will use it again later for another ghost print and then it became also a really nice print but you will see it in the end. I really love the texture that is on it. It's just sad that <laughs> there is so much white area. I will use it and reprint these areas. And sometimes white areas are really interesting on a print. And here I just show you the print I've done before. I just laid it aside immediately to make that ghost print. I will try this again because there is much paint left in the lid of the bottle and I just get it out with this silicone tool. I don't want to waste too much of this paint. And this time I try to put just really light um, to have some more paint left. And here I'm grabbing the print I've just done before to fill the white areas.
I really like it. I think it can be a super interesting background. And I think this is one of my absolute favorite prints. I really like the colors.
I believe on this spread I forgot to add more texture with stamps and I just printed it immediately but it turned out really pretty I think. It's almost like a rainbow background. I also really like that color blocking I have because it can be really interesting, especially on an Otrona background or also on a card. I'm experimenting a little bit with that color blocking technique by um, applying the paints in different areas or different shapes.
I will now make my last print and I will use one of these acetate sheets and then the tissue paper. And that's my last print for today. I will give you a flip through all the prints immediately. I'm starting with the tissue prints and the ones I did on the foil. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, please check out my playlist with the jelly printing videos. And of course, subscribe to my channel. I wish you a wonderful weekend. Bye!